I feel like in the past, it at least has helped me to further understand what I'm applying to, what am I getting into? Um, and also, I'm not sure if in Brooklyn, um, you guys have an alumni association. Um, just I, in the past, I've done that and been connected with somebody that was in the field I was interested in. So for example, at one point I was, I still am and kind of fell into it, um, the beauty and fashion industry. I'm working with Neutrogena, so it's skincare. Um, but someone from Baruch did put me in contact with um, an alum that worked at Chanel. So in that case, like she invited me over to her office and it was a really cool experience as an undergrad student, um, a big brand, it's like very exciting. So I got to know a little bit more about what she did um, still follow up with her from time to time, just because you never know where you might end up in a few years. It's always good to keep in touch with people. Um, and just like reaching out, like not being scared of, I feel like many times people do put this fright in us that, you know, you have to write the perfect email, not too lengthy, not too short, be formal, um, just be concise and to the point and just reach out to somebody working in, let's say a company that you're interested in and be like, Hey, you know, like, I just want to pick your brain a little bit and ask you questions. Um, and like, again, probably people have said it a million times, people love to talk about themselves. Um, I'm pretty sure somebody out of like probably five people that you message, one or two are going to respond. Um, and it's always just good to understand more of the industry and it'll prepare you more um, to answer some of the questions um, that they might have been asked during an interview. That's great. That's great. And that um, it kind of reflects what we're doing now. Um, the alumni mentoring program that we have, we are doing that by theme. So right now we're doing one that is accounting focused. Um, and that's where we're going to try to pair students with accounting um, professionals in that case, their alumni. But we're also working to develop some materials for students to be able to reach out to alumni themselves on LinkedIn and to do it effectively. And it's, it's a great um, exercise for students to be able to do the research, develop the type of questions you want to ask, the email, like you said, Mariana, the, the, the type of email, short, concise, and just like get to the point. And, uh, and then you would reach out to them. And uh, you are absolutely right. <laughs> you know, people do like to talk about themselves, but then especially if they feel like they're, they're making a, a difference in your life, this, this could be the beginning of a, of a long-term mentoring relation, perhaps. Um, I'm, I'm lucky enough to say that I've had an alumni mentor, my alumni mentor I've known for 17 years. I met him in 2003 um, and we stayed in touch ever since, uh, you know, just once or twice a year now, sometimes maybe more, maybe less. Um, so that's something, something to keep in mind. LinkedIn is critical in terms of that point. Um, and then also, when we're not doing the themes uh, for the alumni mentoring, we are going to have panels like this Career Exploration Month is in November. And then we have a networking luncheon, I believe, in April. So those are your opportunities to kind of meet with more alumni that way, too. Thank you, Mariana. So if the role is an entry level, zero to two years, I think it's having an internship or two under your belt. Um, isn't a bad idea. Um, but even if you're applying to the New York Times or maybe finding a couple other jobs, it's not a bad thing to go to another place, get some professional experience for, again, a year or two, uh, and then bounce around uh, every two, three years and just just leveling up and seeing what you can, what you can uh, experience. Um, and the second is like what Mariana said, which is the networking. So I also networked my way into the times um at least as far enough to get i didn't get a, i didn't get the job offer like handed to me but enough to get me past um the uh up to up to an interview basically so we're just the, a hiring screen a hiring manager screen so um i'm sure you guys have talked about it, like at other events but uh hiring is difficult it took me four tries to get to the time so i should apply four separate times to get to the, the role that I'm in now. So, um, and that all took, I think like eight to nine months. Um, so it takes a while, um, be patient with it, but you have to be realistic that they're depending on the size of the company and the role itself, there could be hundreds of people applying and only a hand few are gonna get screened and then move forward to the next sort of stage. So. Be realistic with yourself and don't set 
sort of like wild expectations and say that, oh, this is, this is it, this is my dream job. So um, yeah, I, yeah, I would just say have experience and network really well. Try to get someone that can get you in. And that, that sounds like persistence. And that sounds like not, not taking no for an answer. Again, like you said, it's like, this is the dream job, I must get it. And we do see that a lot with students where they, they kind of put that pressure on themselves. I must get this. Like, this is it, yeah. this is my way. I don't, yeah, I, I think jobs are, um, you can take it for whatever, for what it is. I think jobs can be very fulfilling and uh, someone may want a job just for the money. Someone may want a job that pays very little, but it's their dream job. I think if you just know what you kind of want, like in your early life. And for me, it was stability, uh, setting a good foundation, saving money. So like that, it just made, it just made it very easy. For, I have jobs that I would love to work at now, but I know what like the, the tra it requires maybe months of travel or sort of like working wild hours or the pay mine may not be as high, but it could be my dream job. But so I can kind of see past that, but I still enjoy my job. So, um, I would just be like honest with yourself about what you want to do. And I know people that have made it very clear that like they'd rather work at a job that they love, but be paid X amount than work at a job that they kind of like, but be paid double. So it's your decision. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. That's the trade-off, right? And you have to, you have to think about what the trade-off is. Um, you know, which, which one is more important to you? So that's a very, that's an excellent point. And that's one that I, I hear from a lot of people. Um, and one last part about that too, you know, you apply four times. Good. That's good. You know, students worry that's like, well, I've already applied like twice and they don't want me. It's like, no, 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 no. Continue to apply. Continue to apply. Definitely like the college assistant role, right? If you, if you're working in higher education, definitely taking on a part-time role uh, can definitely get your, yourself um, in the department that you want to work for, for the program you want to work for. I think the other thing that you want to acknowledge is that, uh, don't limit yourself to what you can do, right? Um, a lot of times um, I found myself in that situation when I was trying to like build myself as a professional where I was like, oh man, I'm too scared to do this. I don't know if I, if, if I can do this, right? But throwing yourself into an opportunity, um, even if it doesn't seem relatable, I've been very fortunate and blessed to find that it connects in one way or another. And so it leads to a conversation, it leads to an opportunity so not limiting yourself because it's not titled what you want to do, right? It, oh, it doesn't say the exact job description that I'm looking for, right? No, like if it's an opportunity, if the skills are there, if there are skills in that opportunity that you don't have, take that opportunity, use it to build yourself, right? I think you never stop building yourself. So we're constantly doing things, right? And even in the jobs that I have had, I tend to do things that perhaps others wouldn't want to do, like things that might seem tough or a challenge. Um, my background is political science. When I did academic advising for ASAP, no one wanted to do STEM. No one wanted to advise STEM. Everybody wanted to do the easy majors, right? But I was the only one who did STEM. Um, and then eventually another colleague took that on. But that opportunity there led me then to work outside of ASAP. And I ended up working at Columbia University doing a project, you know, with them. You know, uh, I ended up working at other colleges, you know, as the only academic advisor who was doing STEM. So, um, you know, no one wanted to take it. So again, that's why I say, don't limit yourself. I, at first, it might be a challenge. It might be hard, but it pays off, right? That's a skill that you put now in your cookie jar. And then you say, I got this. Right? I know how to develop this. I have experience with this. So take it from me as someone who came from a political science background, right? which to many people might seem limiting. It's not. It's what you do with it. Right? Make sure to check out the My Career tab on the BC Navigator app, where you can track your career progress based on the amount of credits you've earned, stay updated on upcoming events from the Magner Center, and watch our videos for insight and advice on your career field.